So while the rest of us were trying to process the onslaught of negative headlines and multiple mass shootings in the span of a couple of weeks, lawmakers in Oklahoma were plotting and scheming, and they decided to, while nobody was paying attention, become the first state in the nation to enact a total abortion ban. Total ban. That means from the moment of conception, it is illegal for women to have abortions in this state. Now, as Jake Johnson of Common Dreams explains, Oklahoma on Wednesday became the first state in the U.S. to enact a total ban on abortion after Republican Governor Kevin Stitt signed a bill that outlaws the procedure at fertilization and deputizes private citizens to enforce the prohibition. Modeled after Texas's similarly draconian ban, the Oklahoma measure is one of several increasingly extreme bills that state-level Republicans advanced following the leak of a draft opinion, making clear the right-wing Supreme Court's majority intention to overturn Roe v. Wade in the coming weeks. Galvanized by the likely end of Roe, Republicans in Florida are eyeing a total ban on abortion as GOP leaders and right-wing groups continue laying the groundwork for a potential attack on reproductive rights at the federal level. Minnie Timaru, president of NARAL, Pro-Choice America, called the new Oklahoma law, which took effect immediately, cruel and terrifying, and voiced solidarity with our partners on the ground working to fight this. The Oklahoma ban includes exceptions in cases of rape and incest, but those crimes are woefully under rendering the narrow exceptions largely meaningless. While the law explicitly doesn't apply to Plan B, state-level GOP lawmakers have signaled their intention to target emergency contraceptives with future legislation. Two of Oklahoma's four abortion clinics had already been forced to stop offering abortion care after Stitt signed into law a separate six-week ban earlier this month. The measure that Stitt signed Wednesday will compel the two other abortion clinics to cease operations, cutting off services for Oklahomans as well as Texans who had been traveling to the neighboring state to receive care. Oklahoma's total abortion ban empowers private citizens to sue providers as well as anyone who aids and abets an abortion, an enforcement mechanism designed to evade legal challenges. The reward for successful lawsuits is at least $10,000. Now, to be clear, the bounty hunter laws are indeed written to avoid constitutional challenges, as the article explains, but... Cultivating this climate of paranoia, making sure that you turn citizens against each other for monetary reward, this is a fascistic tactic. So keep that in mind as well. Now, this is going to be something that we see happen again and again. And Oklahoma may be the one domino that makes the others fall. Perhaps Florida follows suit. Because if you can absorb all of the backlash then other governors can do what you're doing and not take as much heat. So I wouldn't be surprised if other states like Florida follow suit. Um, now, I want to share an interview with the governor from a couple of weeks ago. This is about a week and a half ago, to be to be clear, give or take. Um, but he's going to talk about the overturning of Roe v. Wade. And this is after he signed a six-week abortion ban into law. Now, uh, take notice how unmoved he is by facts and uh, reason. All right, with the appearance from this leaked draft opinion, if it remains and becomes the majority opinion that Roe may be going down, you've signed a trigger law that would make it a felony to perform an abortion punishable by up to 10 years in jail and up to $100,000 in fines. Dr. Maya Bass, who performs abortions there in Oklahoma, says this. These laws are being created by people who have no medical expertise. They're not being created with patient safety or medical outcomes in mind. They're created entirely to control bodies. Your response. Well, my response is uh, I represent 4 million Oklahomans. I don't know how much clearer we can be. Uh, we believe life begins at conception and we're gonna protect life in Oklahoma. Uh, you know, there were 5,000, just in Oklahoma alone, 5,000 unborn children that were uh, killed last year. And we don't believe that in Oklahoma. Uh, other states can do things differently, but uh, we're gonna stand for life in the state of Oklahoma. Okay, a group called The Frontier, uh, a journalistic group, has looked into what they say, some fact checks on what you're saying about how people in Oklahoma feel about abortion. They cite a Pew Research study. They say the most recent numbers they have are from 2014, found that 51% of Oklahoman respondents believed abortion should be legal in all or most cases. So within the last few years, they say your state was pretty evenly split, actually, on this issue. Well, so some of those, uh, you're... Your, uh uh, some of those different facts or those newspapers that you're quoting uh, uh, are not what we find uh, with the people in Oklahoma. 
These bills, uh, the representatives are elected from all over the state of Oklahoma, probably 80, 90 percent passage in our state. Uh, so I totally disagree with those numbers. OK, so let's talk about another law that you signed, much like in what your neighboring state, Texas, has done, allows for private causes of action for anyone who attempts, completes or facilitates an abortion. This can be including someone who pays for one after a heartbeat is detected, roughly six weeks. We've got brand new Fox News polling on this and how people feel about at that six week mark. About 50 percent say they think at six weeks abortion should remain legal. Now, your law, as I understand it, has no exceptions for rape or incest, and the argument is a victim may not know at six weeks that she is pregnant. So what do you say to a woman who finds herself in that situation, lives in your state, and, and feels like she's got no options? Well, first off, super compassionate about that. I have daughters, cannot even imagine uh, what that would be like and that hardship. Uh, but you have to choose that is a human being inside the womb and we're going to we're going to do everything we can to protect life and love both the mother and the child and we don't think that killing one to protect another is the right thing to do either and our heart is super compassionate about that we want the churches we want all the services the state the the nonprofits to come around with adoption services uh and it, it, that is that's super super hard and uh, and we're going to do everything we can to help them but aborting that child we don't think is the right thing to do super sorry we feel really bad for that rape victim who we're forcing to carry that baby to term but i hope she knows how bad we feel i mean these people are so callous these are sociopaths these are evil people now as far as i understand it the rape exception only kicks in between weeks zero and six, but because of the previous law that they signed, the trigger law that was referenced in that interview, uh, the exception for rape or incest goes away after the sixth week. It's really unclear because you have overlapping laws here, but either way, this is extremely barbaric. Most women don't know that they're pregnant at six weeks. That could be a late period, not even knowing that they're pregnant. And now, banned insane this is an insane barbaric country that we live in and this is not going to get rid of abortions in the state of oklahoma it will just force women to pursue unsafe illegal abortions and this is going to cause lots of women to die now i've stated this time and again and it seems like conservatives who hear that don't care and you need to look at their ambivalence look at their lack of concern for these women and uh you need to remember that because they're telling you who they are. They're not pro-life. They couldn't care less about life. They are forcing these women, in some cases, to die all so they can protect a fetus. They are truly insane. Now, um, he said that he's doing this because he represents Oklahomans. Uh, now, what I love is that the Fox host, to her credit, never get to say that about Fox anchors, but she actually cited a poll disproving that. And then his response was, oh, well, I totally disagree uh, with those numbers. You totally disagree with those numbers. Okay, facts don't care about your feelings, Snowflake. You may have some anecdotes to suggest that people don't want abortion to be legal. And, you know, you surround yourself by enough pro-choice people that I'm assuming that your perception of reality has been skewed. But believe it or not, this isn't what your constituents want. There isn't a single state where overturning Roe v. Wade has more than 30% support. But he doesn't care. He wants to impose his theocratic views on every single person in that state. And let me be perfectly clear here. Even if abortion wasn't popular, I don't give a shit. If you don't like abortion, tough shit, don't get one. But you don't get to dictate what women do with their bodies, right? If the government said, you have to give up your kidney to save a different life, I'm assuming that most people would object to that, right? Well, why do I have to do that? What about the risks to me and my health? Sure, it's going to save a life, but I shouldn't be forced to do this. But you see, these male lawmakers don't give a shit. If they were able to get pregnant, if all of these cis lawmakers could push a baby out of their assholes, then I'm sure that they would have a completely different opinion when it comes to abortion. Do yourself a favor and click the join button on YouTube to become a member. Because Mike's doing a great job getting to watch his videos before everyone else is tremendous. Many people are saying this. Join today, folks. You won't regret it.